guys and welcome to lesson five of Mr G's Idiot's Guide to Composing and Arranging. Now we're going to build on what we've done in previous lessons so if you're unsure of where we are please feel free to look at the previous lessons and what we have here if you remember is a 16 bar melody that we composed right back in lesson one with a modulation, this is in C major, a modulation in uh, the relative minor, A minor and then back to C major. So the structure of the tune is A, A, B, A in terms of sections. Then we put a simple accompaniment to it. We covered a little bit on uh, basic chords and suspensions. Now, what I want to deal with today before we start building this piece up into a much bigger ensemble is to just talk about inner parts or accompaniment. Now, one of the things I always teach my students is try and avoid putting long notes in all over the place because if you come to actually play the part, it's boring. It's dull as dishwater. So you got to think about, right, what can I actually do with this? So you could go for an, um, for rhythm. Rhythm is important. You can separate the notes. So a simple thing to do in this C major triad. Let's just show a few examples. So one thing you could do, you could change it to crotchet. So you will use our keypad down here. Change that semi brief to crotchet. And then half a repeat, don't forget. OK. And that gives you a simple crotchet accompaniment. Yeah, which is OK. And then you do the same here. And then the same here. OK, and that would give you something a little bit more interesting. OK, or you might decide, yeah, that's OK, but still a little bit boring. Can we do anything rhythmical? with this. So you could maybe try a bit of what we call syncopation. You'll have probably covered that in some of your earlier uh, music lessons, but let's just try this rhythm. So we'll just go... Da -da -bum -bum -bum. I quite like that rhythm actually. And here we go. Let's uh, do the same in this bar. Well, let's listen to it first of all. Hear yeah, that syncopation between the melody line and here, which works quite well. So let's just change that. And then a quavering at the end. There we go. Now, that bar, don't forget what I taught you in possibly lesson one, or maybe lesson two. We can just copy by clicking on the bar, holding down out, and clicking on the bar you want it to go to. And we'll leave those crotchets as they are. Okay, so let's have a listen to that. Works okay, yeah. Uh, the left hand of the piano, we could just have something like a crotchet, like that. Let's put a rest in. We want to change that to a rest, two crotchet rests. You click on it, it's the same thing as what you would do, you change the note value. So what we're going to do, instead of having that long note, we're just going to have that rhythm. Balm, rest, rest, balm, and then we'll put it on here. Balm, balm, then let's have a listen now. That's okay. Now we know that this A section is just a repeat, so we will for now just copy, so hold down shift, repeat it, and we know also that the last little bit is the same. So copy. Oh dear, can you see what I've done? I've copied it in the wrong place. <gasps> well, there's a simple way of doing this. Of backtracking. If you hold down Command on the Mac, it's probably Control on a PC, and tap Z, there you go. It takes you back a step. See, I copied it onto there instead of copying it onto there. 
then all we need to do is to decide what's going to happen in our B section. Now we could keep it the same rhythm, or we might decide, you know what, let's do um, let's do quaves. Yeah, let's do quavers. See what I'm doing here? And then we'll keep those as crotchets. Now, just something else you can, we've not really talk, talked about here is, you could turn these into sort of arpeggios. Once you've put them in as chords, okay we could decide say here just for a bit of difference that we can start taking the notes out so let's take that middle one out so all we do is click on it and then tap backspace and let's take that one out and then we'll take the bottom one out and the top one out see what I'm doing and then we'll take the bottom two out and then we'll come back down again so that's created an arpeggio yeah and we can repeat that out for repeat okay if you wanted to be really clever you could you could alter the notes a little bit so here we could um, make it go up and down but you don't want to get in the way of this I suppose so let's leave it as it is and let's do that same maybe same pattern as we did before crotch it Crotch it, crotch it, crotch it. So let's have a listen to that mine a bit. The arpeggio works really nicely, doesn't it? You might decide every now and again, you decide, oh, actually, I really like that. I'm going to do that here as well because I like that arpeggiated idea more than the quaver so you just adapt don't forget backspace knocks them out let's copy that and you can play around with, oops, you can play around with these till you find something that you really like okay keep that the same because that's not so much of an arpeggiated idea so let's have a listen Ah, now we've got a clash in there, haven't we? So look, we've got a B against an A. So we've got really, we've got to alter one of those notes. Now we could make that go down to an A. That's one option. Or we make that go down to a B. So what I would do, I would try both. That's quite nice. Let's try putting them both down to A. And then it's just a choice, really. And there's a B clash there against an A. So the same thing again. I think there we might put that up to the B. Let's have a listen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there was something that occurred to me at the end of last lesson. When you are coming out of a modulation, so we're in A minor and we're going back into C, it is often the best idea to make do you remember what we talked about perfect cadences 5-1 so really this chord here oops needs to change because it's an A minor chord at the moment which is chord 6 in C and 6 to 1 is a funny modulation really so we want this to be a chord 5 in C which will be where is our scale will be a G chord we might, so we're probably going to have to modify that melody to a B and change this to a G chord. Something like that. Let's have a listen now, see what that sounds like. We should get a smoother transition back into the C major because we've now got this cadence, chord 5 to chord 1. That's the way to get in and out of keys. Now listen to the difference. that works so much better it's not perfect but it works a lot better so let's have a listen to the whole thing now
Okay, so that works for me all right. So let's save that, save as, because this is now lesson five. Lesson five, save. Now, what we might do is to let you experiment with that a little bit. So I would pause the video now and get yourself up to speed, experiment. It might be that you come back to this next week. So the second half of lesson four is expanding this piece to a bigger ensemble. Now, a lot of the, your choice of ensemble really depends on which instruments you know a little bit about and which instrument maybe you play. Now, I'm a brass player. I'm a trumpet player, so my natural inclination is to write for brass, but it doesn't have to be. But what I want to show you today is how easy it is to write for any ensemble. So let's take, for example, string quartet, two violins, viola, cello. Now, if you want to convert this into a little, what we call an arrangement, all we do, we go to the home menu up here where it says add and remove instruments we're going to add some instruments so let's just close that we don't want band instruments we want uh, orchestral instruments now so it opens up a whole new gamut strings right let's go violin one violin two viola violin cello or cello for short okay now i'm going to move these down a bit down the score so our original things are at the top now this will make your score much bigger as you can see but we are now going to just copy stuff into here we're going to turn it into a string quartet see the clef there this is viola clef now you don't need to worry too much about that because we're just going to copy stuff in so let's just keep it simple we're going to put that melody line onto the first violin. So we've highlighted it using shift and we're now going to hold down out and we're going to copy it and there it is. Okay, it's just loading the sound you can see down here. Right, so so let's have a listen to that. So that's quite nice okay now this is where it starts to get really interesting because what we're going to do we're going to put this bass part the left hand of the piano so again click and use shift to capture we're going to put this on the cello part which you will notice is also in bass clef so these notes are not going to be a problem for the cello the thing about Sibelius is it will tell you if you are trying to give a note to an instrument that it can't play okay so for example if we were doing something right down there you see it changes color so the cello can't it changes to red that's to tell you the cello can't actually play that note all right so you don't have to fear anything so I might copy that dynamic you can copy dynamics dead easy click on it hold down alt again and there it is and then always tap escape so we've got violin and cello. Let's have a listen. And so on. Now, we are going to divide these parts between the other two stringed instruments. Okay, so we're going to copy that. But we're going to copy it onto both parts, both the second violin, so we're going to hold down Alt, and also the viola. Now, what we've got to decide here, stringed instruments can play more than one note, but it's a little bit complicated. Okay, So what we are going to do, we are going to judiciously, we're going to give the viola, each time there is a chord of three notes, we're going to give the viola the low note okay for starters and we're going to get it to move 
and so on. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just clicking on notes and backspacing. So we know that's on that space there. So we can copy and then move it down with the down arrows. And we've got some crotchets. Oops. Okay, and then we'll give the violin the middle note for now and see whether that works okay. It might be the odd chord that we need to fiddle around with because we've missed out a note. And then we're going to give it the middle note. Alright, let's have a listen to what we've got now. So this is our same melody and accompaniment for string quartet. Uh, staccato notes out because they sound a bit odd. Yeah, right, let's copy that dynamic out to there. Okay, now let's try that again. Oops, got low battery. Now, what I'd like you to do is to now convert the rest of your piece in the same way that I've done. And then in next lesson, we'll see how we've got on. Okay? So, you have been listening to Mr. G's Idiot's Guide to Composing and Arranging. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. If you have, click on subscribe, click the bell, so that you get an update of when my next lesson will be. So, thanks very much for taking part. Experiment and enjoy. Bye for now.